Now the thing is, in Arabic, you expect liyat azakka. He gave his money so that he may be cleansed, so that he may clean himself up. Remember, the previous surah told us who is the one who succeeded. Qad aflaha man zakkaha, zakkaha. And this surah is teaching you want to become clean, you want to purify yourself. How do you do it? You malahu yatazakka. He gave his wealth, but the what the translation I'm trying to get at is he gave his wealth in order to cleanse himself, right? But the in order to part would have been the letter lam. Alladhi yu'ti malahu liyatazakka. But there's no lam here. You know what that is teaching us? Give wealth, you won't purify yourself. Who's gonna purify you? Allah is gonna purify you. Giving of wealth will not purify you in and of itself. In the end, Allah Azza wa will purify you. This is not cause and effect. So what this yatazakka illustrates is in hopes that he will cleanse himself. In hopes of cleaning himself, he gives wealth. That Allah will clean him that Allah will cleanse the filth inside of him. Remember in the previous session, a couple of weeks ago, we talked about that dua where we ask Allah to clean us. Right? And خَيْرُ مَنْ زَكَّاهَا You're the best of those who can cleanse it. So here we're learning that lesson again. So what's the purpose of giving wealth? Cleaning oneself up as a gift of Allah Azza wa You give the gift to the poor and Allah cleans you up. And Allah cleans you up. SubhanAllah. May Allah make us all cleansed. The other benefit of this ayah, it's so beautiful. You know the surah began, فَأَمَّا مَنْ أَعْطَى The one who gave a lot. But here we don't read, الَّذِي يُعْطِي مَا لَهُ What do we read? الَّذِي يُؤْتِي مَا لَهُ He gives. Allah doesn't say He gives a lot. He says to cleanse, your, cleanse yourself, the condition isn't to give a lot now. To cleanse yourself, just start giving. And you know, there in the, in the previous setting, أَعْطَى It was left, left open. Allah didn't say, أَعْطَى مَا لَهُ he gave a lot of his wealth. Allah didn't mention wealth. So what do you give a lot of if you don't have wealth? You give your time, you give your effort, you give your youth, everything. But if Allah mentioned mal there, what about the poor people? They don't have a lot to give. But when it came to giving, He didn't say giving a lot here, He just said giving. Here He mentioned mal. Yu'ti malahu. Why? Because even the poorest person can give something. Everyone can give something. If you only have two dates, just take a scrape, the peel off, give that. Give a seed, give something, give something. Allah doesn't ask you to give a lot because you may not have a lot. And how do we know that? Allah doesn't say, يُعْطِي مَا لَهُ He says, يُعْطِي مَا لَهُ But when it came to giving in general, which means give of your loves, give of your aspirations, give of your youth, give of your talent, and give of your wealth if you have, give of your life, then you أَعْطَى no, no limitation, no objects placed. Here an object has been placed. Which is an amazing illustration, again, of giving of wealth. Even just keep giving a little, don't stop. Make it a habit. Every time you come to masjid, just drop something off. Give some to the needy, give something to the khabak. Just make it a habit. Keep cleansing your wealth. Keep losing the love of it. Keep your, tell your children why you should, they should do it. Every time you give them a gift, teach them to give sadaqah. Teach them to be grateful. Teach them to be giving people. We're, te- we're giving our kids too many toys. Too many toys. And they're not giving anything to anyone. So much so some kid comes over to your house and they grab one of your kid's toys, what happens to your child? They have a hernia right there. He's holding my doll, he's holding my teddy bear. You know, we're, we're teaching them greed. This is the age where we have to teach them what? Giving. Because if they learn greed now, it's never gonna leave. It's never gonna leave. You think your kids are good just because they, they come into masjid? This attitude of giving and not giving is the key in this surah. It's the key to have a, have a clean person. So teach your children to give. Give to each other, give to neighbors, give in sadaqah, right? Train them in how, and give of the things they love. Teach yourself this, teach your children this. You know, for Eid, buy new clothes, right? And give half of them to somebody else. Or buy new clothes and give them to somebody else altogether. We bought this, you know, because Allah will give us even better. Yeah? How much better? A lot better. Really? Yeah. Teach your children that. Make them imagine what Allah will give them. Now Allah says, now the human being will be informed. What did he make a priority out of? And what did he put on the back burner? That's the translation I'll prefer here. Bima qaddama, what did he give priority to? What took taqdeem for him? What was priority number one? What took precedence? Wa ma akhara, and what could wait? What were the things that you put on the back burner? The crime of the human being isn't necessarily that he doesn't do a good deed. The human being says, it can wait, I can do it later. The crime of the human being isn't necessarily that he doesn't leave sin. He says, I'll leave it later. Or, you know, let me do what I want right now. I'll do that later. I have time. Taqdeem and ta'khir, not the grammar one. 
the one for life. Human beings will be thoroughly informed. What were your priorities? What did you put ahead? What came first for you? What came later for you? Bima qaddama wa akhar. The other meaning of qaddama wa akhar in tafsir juz amma I mentioned also. Qaddama also means what you've sent forward. You've done deeds, you've done works, and every one of them are waiting for you. Our deeds are waiting for us. Kullu nafsin bima kasabat rahina. You've sent collateral over. You've sent deeds over for processing. And you're going to meet those deeds on judgment day. I don't meet my deeds now, I just do them now. I will meet them then. وَوَجَدُوا مَا عَمِلُوا حَاضِرًا Then you're standing face to face in front of their salahs. If your salat was lousy, you'll be standing in front of a lousy salat, staring right at you. That's what it's going to be. If you were lying, cheating, backbiting, angry, arrogant, condescending, whatever you were, you'll be looking right at you in the face. And then you're going to say, Mali هَذَا kitab. That's, that's the reality of it. بِمَا قَدَّمَ وَأَخَّرْ What did he make a priority out of? What did he put on the back burner? This is one of those life transforming ayat. The human being will be thoroughly informed, this was your priority. This is what you spent time on. This is what you did with your free time. This is what you thought can wait. You had all these dreams, I want to memorize the Qur'an. What did you do for it? How many seasons of how many TV shows did you watch instead? How, that was a priority for you. What do you want it to memorize? Oh, but it can wait though, inshallah, one day, when my heart is purified, then I shall start. You know? بِمَا قَدَّمَ وَأَخَرْ بَلِ الْإِنسَانِ No, no. Yes, on that day the human being will be given thorough news, but it's not like the human being is blind now. Rather the case is that the human being, عَلَى نَفْسِهِ Against his own self, بَصِيرًا Is fully insightful. There is one person that knows so much about you, and nobody else knows about you. And besides Allah, and that's you. You have an insight into who you are, what your flaws are, what your limitations are, what your capabilities are, what your strengths are, what your weaknesses are, what opportunities you avail, what opportunities you get lazy about. You know that about yourself more than anybody else. And you and I decide to lie to ourselves. We just decide we're not going to have an honest conversation with ourselves, about ourselves, and about ourselves with Allah. We don't want to have that honest conversation. For some people, all they want at the end of their life, what is success to them? Maybe I'll own a house. That's success for them. Maybe if I have this much money, that means I have success. Maybe if I got married to this one or that one, maybe that's, that means I have success. But I go back to what I started with. There are some people who are happy with doing just the minimum. Just the minimum. But I am here to tell you the young people in the audience today. Allah has blessed you and I am telling you He expects great things from you. He does not expect the minimum from you. There are so many Muslims, the only thing left of Islam is their name. That's the only thing left. They don't care about Salat, they don't care about Halal and Haram. They're far from this deen. What can I do to further this deen? What can I do to... I shouldn't just be happy that so many people come and attend Jumu'ah. Does that mean everybody's heart is clean? Does that mean that we, are enough, we don't need any more reminder? Is that what that means? Or are there evils in our society? Are there youth that are turning towards drugs? Are there young people that are just living their life for no purpose? All they do is play video games and watch movies and go to sleep. And the, if you ask them for a purpose, they say, I want to graduate and get a job. Is that a goal? Get a job? Allah gave us such higher goals. Your job itself is a means to a higher end. But you know what? We are living in strange times. The people who need the da'wah the most today are the Muslims themselves. But even if you get a good job, but you don't do your job. You got the job, but you show up late every day. You got the job, but you don't finish any projects. You're sitting there at the desk wasting your time. You're gonna lose that job. Somebody else will come and do it for you. You will not keep that job even if you qualified. Qualifications are not enough. You have to do the work. Allah Azza wa Jal is keep giving all of us. He's already qualified us. We are people of La ilaha illallah. We are already qualified. But that doesn't mean we're doing the work. If we don't do the work, if we don't make we don't concern ourselves. If we don't care, then you know what's going to happen. In tatawallu yastabdil qawman khayrakum, thumma la yakunu amthalakum. 
you turn away and Allah will replace you with a nation other than yourselves and they will not be like you they will not be lazy like you and those are when Mus when young Muslim people have real Iman when young Muslims have real strength in their belief then they can they have the power to change the world they have the power to make the world a, a better place but when young Muslim people don't have real Iman they don't have real conviction then they are a waste of space they are a waste of society a waste of a generation the only thing in their life the only the biggest the, the most important thing in their life is when is the next movie coming out the most important thing is when is the next iPhone coming out the next most important thing is man I wish I had that car that's it your life doesn't go any further than that my teacher used to say that Islam is similar to climbing a mountain you know when you're climbing a mountain you throw a hook and you climb if you throw a hook not very high then you will only reach that much you can't reach any further if your goal is money if your goal is a six-pack if your goal is a car if your goal is a promotion if your goal is entertainment if your goal is girls whatever your goal is then you're only gonna get that you won't get anything else but if your goal is something higher to serve something more than yourself you don't live a selfish life you want to live for the sake of Allah and for the benefit of others that's how you want to live then you will benefit yourself definitely but you will be honored in the eyes of Allah because you set your goal much higher our deen in this beautiful ayah Allah Azza wa Jal describes it قُلْ هَذِهِ سَبِيلِي This is my path. A sabil is a path. And you know what? Allah did not say in this ayah, قُلْ هَذَا دِينِي This is my deen. Tell them this is my religion. This is my Islam. This is my truth. This is my book. He didn't describe it with any other language except this is my path. And all of you know a path is like a journey. So Islam itself, Islam itself is being described as a journey in this ayah. What does that mean? That means you have in any journey you have to make progress, right? So even if you take one step, you are more closer to your destination than the day before or the step before. Every single moment you are making progress in a journey. And in this ayah, Allah's Messenger says, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, this religion of mine and this religion of yours and ours, Islam, is a journey, which means I am supposed to do something more for this deen than I did yesterday. And I'm supposed to do more tomorrow and more tomorrow and more tomorrow. I'm supposed to go further. 